Borthakur IS Academy, an endeavor of excellence. Borthakur IS Academy. Hello everyone, welcome to Borthakur IS Academy, Northeast's premier institute for UPSC, APSC and NPSC preparations. I'm your friend Atri and today I'm here with another segment of Current Affairs 365 dated 23rd of July 2021. I hope you all are doing well. Please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook as well as Instagram. The first news for today is about the support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprise scheme. The Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has formulated this scheme which is also known as the SMILE scheme and it includes a sub-scheme of the Central Sector Scheme for Comprehensive Rehabilitation of Persons Engaged in Begging. It is a new scheme after the merger of existing schemes for beggars and transgenders. It provides for the use of existing shelter homes available with the state and union territories uh, governments along with the urban local bodies for the rehabilitation of the persons engaged in the act of begging. Here the main focus is uh, extensively on rehabilitation, provision of medical facilities, counselling, education, skill development and so on. It will be implemented with the support of the state and union territory governments, local urban bodies, voluntary organizations, then CBOs, community-based organizations, etc. Uh, it will be a comprehensive scheme for persons engaged in the act of begging. And during the year 2019-20, the ministry had released an amount of rupees 1 crore to the National Institute of Social Defense and rupees 70 lakh for uh, the towards the national backward classes finance and development corporation for skill development programs for the beggars uh, the national institute of social defense is an autonomous body and it is a central advisory body for the ministry of social justice and empowerment it is the nodal training and research institute in field of social defense and the mandate of this institute is to provide inputs for the social defense programs of the government through training research and documentation then the next institute national uh, like i mean next body the national backward classes finance and development corporation is a government of india undertaking under the aegis of ministry of social justice and empowerment it was uh, incorporated under the companies act of 1956 on 13th of january 1992 here the main objective is to promote economic and developmental activities for the benefit of backward classes and also to assist the poorer section of these classes in skill development and self-employment ventures. Currently, if we uh, take a look at the state status of beggars in our country, as per the census of 2011, the number of beggars in India has increased from the last census and West Bengal tops the chart followed by Uttar Pradesh. Uh, and when it comes to union territories, the New Delhi has the highest uh, number of beggars, which is followed by Chandigarh. Among the northeastern states, Assam has topped the chart while Mizoram ranked low with only 53 beggars. Recently, the Supreme Court has also agreed to examine a plea for decriminalizing begging, which has been made an offense in various states under the Prevention of Begging Act. Secondly, we will have a look at the polluted river stretches of our country. The Central Pollution Control Board CPCB in 2018 identified 351 polluted river stretches of our country. The study which was uh, undertaken by CPCB revealed that discharge of untreated waste wastewater is one of the main reasons of river pollution in our country. This assessment of water quality for identification of polluted river stretches also revealed that 31 states and union territories had rivers and streams that did not meet the water quality criteria. Almost 60% of polluted river stretches exists in eight states of our country. These states are Maharashtra, Assam, Madhya Pradesh, Kerala, Gujarat, Orissa, West Bengal and Karnataka. Maharashtra has the highest number of polluted river stretches of the country. The National Green Tribunal in 2018 directed that 100% treatment of sewage must be ensured before 31st of March 2020. However, uh, these states have sewage treatment capacity which is disproportionate to the sewage that is generated. This huge amount of sewage is left untreated or they are partially treated and discharged directly into the water bodies. This is the main reason why the river gets polluted and also because of that there is an increase in the biological oxygen demand. 
Now, what is this uh, BOD, biological oxygen demand? It is the amount of dissolved oxygen that is needed by microorganisms to decompose organic matter under aerobic conditions. Aerobic means in the presence of oxygen. The more uh, organic matter there is in the sewage, the greater will be the uh, BOD. And greater uh, BOD means that there will be lower amount of dissolved oxygen available for bigger, uh, higher animals. Therefore, uh, this BOD is a reliable parameter of organic pollution of a water body. One of the main reasons for treating wastewater prior to its discharge into the water bodies is to reduce its uh, BOD. That means to reduce its need of oxygen and thereby lessen its demand from the streams, lakes, rivers or uh, you know any water body into which it will be released. There are some other reasons for polluted rivers too which includes urbanization, uh, industry wastage etc. Rapid urbanization of our country during the recent decades has given rise to a number of environmental problems like wastewater generation, its collect collection, treatment, disposal etc. Then unrestricted flow of sewage and industrial effluents into the rivers it has also adversely affected their purity. All these industrial wastes are toxic to the life forms which consume that water. Traces of fertilizers and pesticides are washed into the nearest water bodies at the onset of monsoon or whenever there is there are heavy rains. This is, uh, uh, you know, a negative impact or of the improper agricultural practices. Impact of river water quality resulting from discharges of the untreated or partially treated wastewater. It will uh, depend on the dilution offered by the quantum of flows in the river. Then there are many religious and social practices. Uh, the faith and social practices, it adds to the pollution. For example, uh, mass bathing in a river body during festivals is another uh, environmentally harmful practice. Then dead bodies are cremated on the banks of the river, especially Ganga. Partially burnt bodies are also flung into, that, uh, into the river. These are the uh, like various reasons because of which we, the pollution level in rivers are increasing day by day. Now uh, let us have a look at the government initiatives to tackle water pollution. Recently the National Green Tribunal directed the Ministry of Jal Shakti to devise an appropriate national river rejuvenation mechanism for effective monitoring of the steps to curb pollution and also for rejuvenation of all polluted river stretches across our country. Then we have the National Water Policy of 2012, National Water Mission of 2010. This particular mission ensured integrated water resource management leading to water conservation, less wastage, equitable distribution, forming better policies. And uh, there were also certain missions to clean a particular river like the National Mission for Clean Ganga. This envisages a five-tier uh, structure at national, state and district level to take measures for prevention, control and abatement of environmental pollutions in the river Ganga. The Namami Gange project was also there. It integrates the efforts to clean and protect the Ganga river in a comprehensive manner. In order to, uh, you know, make the water bodies clearer and to keep them safe, there is a need for a comprehensive waste management policy which will stress the need for decentralized garbage disposal practices as this will incentivize private players to participate. Along with that, to maintain and restore the wholesomeness of any aquatic ecosystem, there is a need to maintain the minimum flow. Minimum flow of the river is also important to dis, uh, discharge the treated sewage. The third news is related to the Essential Defense Services Bill of 2021. Recently, the government introduced this bill in Lok Sabha. It seeks to replace the ordinance issued in June 2021 and also prohibits any agitation and strike by anyone who is engaged in essential defense services. So here, uh, let us now take a look at the key points of this bill. Firstly, essential defense services includes any service in any establishment or undertaking dealing with production of goods or equipments that are required for defense related purposes or any establishment of the armed forces. In addition, the government may also declare any service as an essential defense service if its cessation affects the production of the, uh, defense equipment or operation and maintenance of industrial establishments engaged in such production. Here, uh, strikes are defined as cessation of work by a body of person acting together. It may include mass uh, casual leave, 
or refusal to work overtime where such work is necessary for maintenance of essential defense services or any other conduct which results in uh, disruption of work in essential defense services. So government here may prohibit such strikes, lockouts and layoffs in units engaged in essential defense services and it may issue such an order if necessary in the interest of the sovereignty and integrity of India. Moreover, the bill also highlighted punishments for the employers violating the prohibition order through any illegal lockouts or layoffs. They will be punished with up to one year imprisonment or 10,000 fine or both. Persons uh, commencing or participating in illegal strikes will also be punished and those who uh, are involved in instigating, inciting or taking actions to continue illegal strikes or unknowingly supply money for such purposes, they will also be punished. All the offences uh, will be cognizable and non-bailable. A cognizable offence uh, is one that requires an immediate arrest. Coming to the public utility services, it will amend the Industrial Disputes Act of 1947 to include essential defence services under public utility services. The undertakings which supply the basic necessary services like electricity, water, gas, transport, power, etc. will come under the purview of the public utility services here. The next news is regarding decoding of uh, the genomes of salt secreting mangrove species. The scientists for first time have decoded the reference grade whole genome sequence of a highly salt tolerant and salt secreting uh, species which is known as Avicennia marina. This study was led by the Department of Biotechnology Purneshwar. Uh, this species Avicenna senia marina is one of the most prominent mangrove species found in all mangrove formations of our country. It is a salt secreting and extraordinarily salt tolerant variant that grows optimally in 75% seawater and can tolerate 250% uh, and higher seawater. These are referred to as grey mangroves or white mangrove. And this study assumes significance because agriculture productivity globally is affected due to abiotic stress factors like limited water uh, availability, salinity of soil and water, etc. Availability of water is a significant challenge to crop production in the dryland areas, which accounts for around 40% of world's total land area. This genomic resources, which are generated in the study, will pave the way for researchers to study the potential of the identified genes for developing drought and salinity tolerant varieties. Mangroves, we all know, these are small trees or shrubs that grows along coastlines, taking root in the salty sediments, mostly underwater. They are referred to, here the word mangrove, it mainly refers to the habitat as a whole or the trees and shrubs in the mangrove swamps. And these are mostly flowering trees and they can survive under extreme hostile environments like high salt and low oxygen conditions. Underground tissues of any plants, they need oxygen for respiration, but in case of um, uh, a mangrove environment, the oxygen in the soil is almost nil and very limited. So the mangrove root systems, it absorbs oxy oxygen from the atmosphere and they have special roots for this purpose, which are termed as breeding roots or pneumatophores. These roots have numerous pores through which the oxygen enters and uh, the underground tissues. Moreover, they have succulent leaves like the desert, okay, desert plants, where the uh, fresh water can be stored in these thick leaves. A waxy coating on the leaves, it seals in water and minimizes evaporation. However, there are many threats to the uh, mangrove forests. Uh, the major threat includes constructional activities. At least one third of all the mangrove forests, it has been lost during uh, the last few decades because of coastal development, including construction of shrimp farms, hotels and other structures. Then uh, mangrove trees are also used for firewood, construction wood, charcoal production and animal fodder. Other uh, activities that, you know, that acts as threat includes overfishing, pollution and the rising sea levels. These are other threats to the mangrove forests and their ecosystem. Globally, mangroves are found in over 118 countries and territories in the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Asia has the highest uh, coverage of mangrove uh, forests followed by Africa, North and Central America, Oceania and South America. 
as per the state of forest report of 2019 mangrove covers uh, in our country is around 5000 square kilometer which accounts for 0.15% of country's total geographical area the deltas of ganga mahanadi krishna godavari and kaveri they contain mangrove forests along with that the backwa backwaters of kerala also have a high density of these forests the sundarbans in west bengal they are the largest mangrove region in the world and is also a unesco world heritage site so this was all for today thank you so much for watching this video i hope it will be helpful don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel i'll see you all again tomorrow with another segment of current affairs 365 only on bodhakur sais academy northeast premier institute for upsc apsc and npsc preparation till then take care keep learning bye bye Bhatakur IS Academy Prastuti aru adhyanor nirbhor jogyo thikona Bhatakur IS Academy